This video is about all the resources that I used during the preparation of my INA CET exam. Starting off with Anki, this is by far the best resource which I used during the preparation and I've made a separate video covering all about Anki. Next up is First Aid. According to me, it is a 4 out of 5 star resource book which is primarily used for USMLE Step 1 exam but has most of the stuff that will be asked in the Indian PG exams as well. Now I give it 4 out of 5 points because it is a book, 700 page book that is filled with facts. So how do you think that you will remember these bunch of facts or these? The harder way is to read and revise things again and again and again and you still might not remember it during the exam. So the better ways to do things are by using Sketchy and Pathoma. Sketchy is 5 out of 5 star resource for anything that requires rote memorization, for example microbiology, pharmacology and some topics of pathology as well. The best thing is that um, it is based entirely of the facts of first aid. So once you're done with sketchy, you don't even have to read those topics from first aid. Now this is a comparison of the uh, boring text of first aid versus that of um, sketchy. So you need to remember the fact that thiazolidine dions increase the risk of fractures. This was in fact one of the one of the concepts or one of the facts that was tested in the INICT exam, this INICT exam. So it is of course covered in first aid, but how do you think that you'll remember a single phrase out of a 700 page book that is filled with similar phrases? Sketchy makes things easier. So this is the, the same sketch of sketchy pharmacology and this is the sketch of anti-diabetic medications which are not based on insulin and sketchy divides the, the, the sketch into different parts so in this sketch the top left corner this section is dedicated to thiazolidine dions and as you know thiazolidine dions is also, are also known as glitazones and sketchy makes this thing easier to remember by, by, by the fact that this girl has been sprayed with glitter so glitter for glitazones and this boy represents side effects as you can see the boy is sitting on a chair whose legs are in the form of a bones that are breaking and this represents fra fractures. So thiazolidine dions also called as glitazones increase the risk of fractures and this was the sole reason I could recall this bit of fact um, in the real exam. So sketchy is amazing for things that requires rote memorization, microbiology and pharmacology but it's also great for some topics of pathology that require rote memorization. For example, neurocutaneous disorders, um, tuberous sclerosis, neurofibromatosis, etc. Or uh, tumor morphologies, that is pediatric versus adult brain tumors. Or nephrotic versus nephritic syndromes and different features of nephrotic syndrome. Um, this is, I, I think, a th um, nephrotic, different features of nephrotic syndrome, I think, is a is a topic that requires rote memorization. For instance, you have to remember different features of all the nephrotic syndromes and Sketchy makes these things easier to remember. However, mind it that Sketchy will not be very helpful for things that require conceptual knowledge. For example, general pathology or different types of AKI. For example, pre-renal versus post-renal AKI and similar topics. And for these, I would recommend Pathoma. Now, Pathoma is the single best resource that I used during the preparation. Um, it's a 218 page book that would cover most of the pathology that you would need for any of the pathology exams. And similarly, and similar to the other resources, it is also based off first aid. But sketchy, but Pathoma has not been written by any random dude making pathology stuff, no. Uh, Pathoma has been authored by Dr. Hossain Sattar, who is the author of uh, chapter number 18, Female Genital System and Breast of Robin's Basic Pathology. And I can vouch that of, of all the pathology resources that you must have used, this would be the best resource out there. Dr. Hussain Sattar knows his stuff and I cannot thank him enough for creating this resource. Now, Pixarize is a resource that, that is similar to Sketchy um, and it's quite popular for topics of biochemistry and it makes pathways like purine synthesis, collagen synthesis, etc. easier to remember. I've given it 3 out of 5 points because these pathways are not routinely tested in the INICET exam. Now, talking about the pricing, Pathoma is actually reasonably priced at $100 for a 12-month subscription 
and they will also ship you the text of the Pithoma, that is the actual book of the Pithoma. Sketchy is a bit costlier. It is $300 for six months, but the good thing is that you will get a bundle a package of Sketchy Pharma Micro and uh, Sketchy Pharma Micro and and pathology and it will also include uh, clinical topics they are now actually making clinical videos as well I don't know how how useful they will be but I can surely vouch for sketchy micro and patho and patho um, sketchy micro and pharmacology and some aspects of uh, pathology as well now talking about the free resources online method is a website that has videos that are free of cost and it is especially good for medicine especially these topics of medicine. If you have time, I would recommend that you at least watch these videos of online method if you're not using any other um, medicine resource. Up to date is a great resource. It is a website that's basically an encyclopedia of all the clinical topics. Um, for topics that you have a hard time finding in the standard textbooks or topics that are controversial, um, you can use up to date to get a get a solid answer um, if you are going to watch if you're going to read about a topic on up to date I will highly recommend that you start with summary and recommendation section and then if you if you still need more information you can jump to the bigger text as well now it is a costly resource but many institutions provide it free of cost so if your institution provides it free of cost you can make the most of out of it now this is a list of the resources that I used for other other topics. Um, I will not read through this this list because there's nothing to explain. But I have supplemented all of these resources with Anki. Now talking about the Maros Q Bank. Um, well, to be very honest, I've not used any Q Bank extensively to recommend for or against it. But I would highly suggest that before doing this Maros Q Bank or perhaps any other Q Bank. You should have a thorough knowledge of the of the previous year topics. So if you're looking for a resource for MCQs, start with previous year topics, previous year papers, and then you can move on to any of the, any of the Q banks. And do not feel compelled to solve the Q banks. If you are able to solve a topic or a subject comfortably in the previous year papers, you can reasonably you, you can be reasonably confident that you don't need to do that topic from the Q bank and you can maybe skip that topic from the QBank. Only use QBanks for your weaker topics if you, are, if, you, if, if you are short of time. Now during the preparation I also used a lot of YouTube channels. Um, so this is a list of the channels that I used. Um, I've tried to rate these uh, YouTube channels on a score of 0 to 5 and the, and the channels with a lower score does not mean that the channels were not good. It is just that the content of these channels did not pertain to what was being asked in the INICT exam. But after all, all of these are great channels and this is the continued list. You can just pause the video and see if, if there is anything that might be of help to you. Now while you're using YouTube, um, you know while I was using YouTube, I used to get distracted by the recommendation section and the subscriptions and you know YouTube shorts and stuff. So I, I used some add-ons that would make the YouTube look like a clean slate and you would just type in whatever you require to search for in the search bar and then it will you know just give you a list of the topics that are related to the search input so I think this really helped me because um, I did not get distracted and I've made a separate video about how to how to use add-ons and what all add-ons I used while using YouTube now, I used many of the innovative study techniques while I was preparing, while I was studying during my medical college. Um, I would not recommend it for people who are short of time or who are already in their dedicated study period. But for students who are in the medical college, they can use some techniques like this. So what I did was that I started making my own videos and it did not require much of anything just your mobile phone and I purchased this stylus you know it, it's just a pen that has a rubber tip at its back so it it works like a stylus and it cost me like 20 rupees um, so I started making my own videos and I would just watch those videos before any of my exams so it would just help me revise things quickly and it also 
kind of reinforced my understanding of the topic and your videos do not have to be any fancy videos just some basic videos just some line diagrams and stuff but um, I promise that it will greatly help you um, and that's all the resources that I used do watch my other video about about Anki I think it will help you a lot